Good evening. My name is Andre McDaniel. Good evening. My name is Andre McDaniel, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by the members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Cliff Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the President is Dr. Edward Yule. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given until salvation, and we must know that name. So, the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? 
a further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, at this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, I'm sorry, the primary constitutional objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the extinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to exploitate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among man whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and studying with us today, all our visiting brothers and all our brethren. We will have a prayer uh, led by Dr. Alexis Hamilton. And our scripture will be, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we will have prayer read by Dr. Derek, uh, I can't pronounce your last name, sir, please forgive me. And our scripture reading will be Isaiah 59 uh, by Dr. Alexis Hamilton. Dr. Derek, if you could please lead us in prayer. Hello. Good evening, class. Let me um, bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Um, Yasha, we humbly um, come to you and ask for your guidance, your love, your direction, your commandment, and let us be obedient to the things that we learn and the things that we hear and love each other with, with a love on unconditional in these prayers. In Yahshua's name, let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good evening, class. Uh, I'll Good evening. be... I'll be reading from the King James Bible, uh, the proper name version. 
uh, and that's Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered per 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 perverseness. None, none calls for justice nor any pleas for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch poisonous serpent eggs and weave the spider's web. He, he that eats of their eggs dies, and that which is crushed breaks out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whoever goes therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn, moaning like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against Yahweh, and departing away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backward and justice stands afar off. For truth has fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Yes, truth fails and he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. And Yahweh saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and to them that turn from transgression in Jacob, says Yahweh. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yahweh, my spirit that is upon you and my words, with words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out the mouth of your seed, nor out the mouth of your seed, seed says Yahweh, from now on and forever. That was Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Dare, for that prayer and Dr. Alexis Hamilton for the scripture reading. I'd like to once again thank everybody for coming out and studying with us today. 
we will be having a regular class format. And before we start, I'd like to remind everybody to please be mindful of your mute, your audio, and your video buttons as you do not disturb the speaker. And for our first speaker today, I would be happy to call on Dr. Mary Taylor. We'll give Dr. Mary Taylor one more second. All right, seems she may be away. Uh, for our next speaker, I'll be happy to call on Dr. William Walker. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like to say uh, good evening to uh, all the brethren. And uh, just to give a very brief but honest testimony in terms of uh, what the gospel means to me at this point in time. There is absolutely nothing more important than what the Holy Spirit can reveal to you as you come to these classes. I've been uh, without the gospel for a little while and uh, I just didn't feel right just didn't feel good. And I didn't until I got, got out of bed one night at, at about the three o'clock and I listened to a good lecture. And guess what? I slept like a baby. <laughs> I slept like a baby. Uh, can we look at the uh, second Corinthians? Uh, I believe it's the 11th verse. Second Corinthians, uh, the eleventh verse, please. What? What? Um. What chapter? Oh, I'm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Second uh, Corinthians. Second chapter. Second. Uh, second Corinthians. Uh, second chapter. Yes. Two and eleven. Um, we say. Before we. I just and that is uh, uh, saying that a punk he, he certainly has the, the power to deceive and uh, trying to lead those away from the gospel that are taking a look at the gospel you see so there's a word going off and that old boy, uh, and call him the old boy, after all, he, uh, he is for the earth. He's been around for a long time. He's played the game for a long time. He's done what God has for a long time, you see. And uh, the first scripture uh, that uh, I thought about was uh, that was made uh, a, or, or a reality to me was uh, the second Corinthians uh, second chapter. And I think it's around the 30th verse. Okay, read it, please. Okay, so what verse again, Dr. Walker? Because your audio is going out. Uh, try, try 30. Okay, second Corinthians, second chapter. And then what verse? 30. Wait, okay. Try, try 30. Okay, and I, okay, Second Corinthians 2 and 3. And I wrote this same unto you, 
least when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice. Having come, okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I want the description of the simplicity that is in uh, the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. Uh, Eve was uh, Eve was uh, led astray by Satan. He lied to her. And uh, he, he hasn't changed. He's doing the same thing now. And through the lie that he, he, he told her, uh, she believed him. And uh, Satan asked her, uh, what, uh, what, what did your, 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 your God tell you? And uh, Eve uh, replied to him that if I touch of the tree, I will surely die. And Satan told her, no, you won't die, you see. And, and that's exactly what's going on now. You, you, you see people that, that, that have a sudden interest in uh, their soul and their soul salvation, uh, they are being told, and in some cases, uh, through much debate, they, they are, they, they're told and shown that it, it really doesn't matter what you're calling. It doesn't matter that you do this or you do that or you believe this or that you believe that, you, you, you see what I'm saying? And, and through uh, that lie, he has deceived many, many people, just as he has uh, he, he received, received Eve back in the Garden of Eden. Uh, now, something akin to that, uh, let's have uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, if you will, please. Okay, four and one. Uh, let's, let's do uh, it's a little bit. Yeah, start at four and one. That's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second Corinthians four and one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh. I'm sorry, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. That's right. That, that, that's good. Right, right there. Uh, it's also been man, made manifest that uh, of, of all the people that have come through the door, and there have been a lot of people through the door, and we know that over the years. Uh, if you've been around as long as I have, you've seen uh, hundreds of people come to the, the, the door. You consider how how uh, adamant and vocal Satan is through his ministers. You, you, you see, uh, you understand that uh, hundreds of people would have to hear the truth of the gospel in order to save a few. You, you, you see, and uh, it, it it works very simply. It's all within the simplicity of the gospel. You see. That uh, if, if Yahweh wants you to know, if he wants you to see, if he wants you to understand, if he wants you to hear the truth, he will reveal what he wants to you. Uh, there are people in the school that have been around for years and years, and there are uh, very basic, fundamental uh, things that they don't yet understand. And it's simply because Yahweh has not ordained that they understand those things at this time, see? And uh, I, I can't tell you that they will understand them sooner or later, you see. You preach the gospel to uh, an educated person and you tell them to look for the whys and the trees and the hands and you explain the, the light from the sun, the moon, the stars, and they don't understand any of that. They really don't. They really don't understand it. Uh, one of, just think about it. One of the first fundamental things we ever heard about the reality of knowing how our creator really is and actually exists uh, which was given to us early on, you see, here, here, here we are uh, years later with all these smart people, or so-called smart people around us, that don't really see it. And at first I thought maybe people were playing games with me. But I understand now, of course, that uh, uh, those things that, that Yahweh has revealed to us, those are the things that we know and understand. And uh, the scriptures say that we will be learning in ages to come the things that we don't know, see, and understand that are mysteries of Yahweh. You see, he's got two 
full ages and eternity to reveal those things to us. That's how much there is. So uh, if, if you don't understand something now, you, you, you be vigilant. You, you may understand it uh, yet in this, in this age and dispensation. And if you don't, uh, you may understand it in uh, ages and dispensations that are to come, okay? Uh, I just wanted to uh, clear one thing, uh, to say one thing more. Uh, I had to do a, as a, an assignment, uh, plate number, I think it's plate number 18, 18 or 19, which uh, talks about, uh, that, that's from that's the 40-plate chart, of course, and it talks about the flood there. And uh, if uh, you will, Will you start reading? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think it's uh, at Genesis, uh, the sixth chapter and the third verse, if you will. That's Genesis six and three. And, and readers, uh, I, I don't have all the equipment that's necessary. I trust your judgment. And uh, as we go through these things, if you feel that this uh, illustration should be uh, visualized and, and put it up, you see. Again, uh, Yahweh will lead you in your steps, and uh, we we must trust in Yahweh. So, right, right now, if you will, please, uh, 6 and 3, Genesis 6 and 3, please. Genesis 6 and 3. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he now, what does that mean? My, my, he, 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 tell, he, says to, he says this to Noah. That his spirit will not always strive with man, you see. Now, how did he know that? How did he know that he was sick and tired and his spirit would not strive with mankind forever? You, you see, he knew that because he is almighty Yahweh Elohim. That's how he knew it, you see. He tells Noah that uh, I, I know that uh, this thing has been a agonizing to me and I have Uh, he didn't make a mistake. Uh, he's simply saying that uh, what's done is done, and I, I made man, I made him for a reason, uh, and I repent that I may had him, uh, or that I, ma I made him. You see, it's kind of like uh, if you give your child the instructions that they must make their bed every morning. You see, before they go to school or to play or whatever. You, you see, well. If they don't make that bed, you may get very upset, you see. But you don't destroy the household rule that he makes that bed. He still has to. The rule still stands. In this case, all the ordinances still stand. Yahweh's word went out, and it would not return into him void, you see. All things will be accomplished. Okay, read on. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of Yahweh came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And Go ahead, read on. Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, see this 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 points to the fact that the 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 uh, the pattern must repeat itself over and over and over again. Now, we're we're talking uh, three, four. Uh, two, see, we're talking four thousand years ago. You see, and and every thought that a man had was. Uh, evil continuously. Now you tell me what's different about then and and now. You, you see, uh, evil abounds uh, throughout throughout mankind. You, you understand, and that's one reason why we must have a a, 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 a Messiah. You see, because man is e is is continually evil from start to finish in his heart and in his mind, and that's the way it is now. Before the, uh, the the flood came through in uh, 1656, you see, uh, the uh, righteous people on the earth were uh, 
Moses and his wife and his three sons and 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 their wives, you see, and Methuselah, you see. And of course, Methuselah was, I believe, Methuselah lived to be 969 years before he, he died. But now he died before uh, the flood culminated, you, you see. So if you read the scriptures very closely, you see that uh, that uh, there were eight souls in that ark, and they constituted all of the righteousness that was in mankind at that time. You, you see what I'm saying? So when uh, it, it started to rain, after about 50 days, people came bamming up the door. Uh, talk about that. And those were all people without souls. You understand? And what happened to those people? Well, after Noah and his family and the animals went into the ark, uh, the, 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 the souls that were out there pounding on the door, talking about at the end, they perished also, you see, and they died. And the scriptures tell you that, you see, uh, the scriptures tell you that uh, Noah was, was, uh, was shut in, you see, with the animals, uh, with the, the, the eight righteous and so on and so forth. And the only thing left was the unrighteous, you see. And it says that they that they were killed off the face of the earth. All the animals, whether they creep, whether they're of the field, or whether they fly, or whatever, all all the animals were killed, you, you, you see. So uh, here's Yahweh that's constituting the fact, and he's going to do a repeat coming into this age. The only thing on the earth plane is going to be the righteous spirit, you understand? And of course, uh, all of the unrighteous are are, are uh, damned, you, you see, and they will die in second death, you, you see. But uh, the the earth at this point in time, when the waters receded and the uh, ark uh, rested on uh, Mount Ararat, uh, uh, Yahweh had preordained that that all of the evilness or the evil spirit in the world uh, was gone. You, you see, now, he didn't he didn't he didn't mean to destroy all at once. If he wanted to, he would have. You see, but very shortly after the uh, the flood, but because mankind building the, the Tower of Babel, you, you, you see, being disobedient. Uh, not paying any attention to what Yahweh said to do or not to do that matter, you see. So the the evilness in the world was uh, was 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 still there, you see. But there was a short time, very short time, that the uh, the, the earth had uh, was void of the uh, satanic spirit, you, you see. Uh, now the the ark, uh, they call it a big boat. It's really more like a big big yacht, not not a big yacht, uh, a big barge, you see. It didn't have uh it didn't have a rudder. It was longer than a football field. Uh when uh, the the floodwaters reached their peak it is about 25, 26 feet above the highest mountains on the earth, you see. I mean it it really rained. Uh <clears throat> I can remember Dr. Kelly uh, saying in a a tape Year, years ago, that uh, the, the the government of the United States was spending thousands of dollars to all kind of research and uh, and to uh, to uh, all the and he said in the world that uh, could have been fed while they were wasting all that millions and millions of dollars to find out if, in fact, there was a lot of water in the, in the uh, atmosphere. Well, at, at that time, when they were doing all the research to find out just how much water there was up there, I believe the scriptures say something to the fact that uh, uh, the, 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 the floodgates of uh, the heavens were opened and the, uh, the fountains of the deep were opened, you see. Well, uh, at this time, while they were doing all this research to find out how much water was in the atmosphere, uh, scientists thought that the water that uh, was on the face of the Earth all came from comets. You see, and those of you that uh, have had course, certain courses uh, 
in your uh, educational careers, uh, you, you, you can learn that uh, comets are very much made up of ice, you see. So through the years and years and years of uh, comets hitting the face of the earth and the ice melting, that's where the water came from. But now they understand that there's hundreds of millions of tons of water in the heavens, you see. All you have to do is just go up uh, about 120 miles into the the, uh, the the stratosphere, the atmosphere, and you will you will see that uh, uh, there's there's water, hundreds, like I said, hundreds of millions of tons of water. Also, there is a part of the Earth that uh, where there is uh, it's called the, the Mariana Trench. It is the deepest place on the face of the earth and uh, as a matter of fact it goes down seven miles and guess what's in that trench water water so if you if you if you drop a a uh, an instrument into that trench uh it'll it'll go for seven miles in the water before it hits the floor or the bottom you see now if you go down uh i don't know maybe eight ten fifteen twenty feet through dirt, and that's all there is once you, you, you hit the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Guess what you find? How about more water? It's, it's really unbelievable. But when you talk about the fountains of the deep, you see there is water underneath the, the water that's in the, the, the earth, you see. So those are just little things that, uh, that, that uh, we should all be curious to know. And someone may say, well, what does that have to do with the gospel? Well, you probably know before it's over with what it has to do with the gospel, you, you see. Dr. Kimley said this, he said, learn everything about everything that you possibly can because you're going to need it, you see. He wasn't talking necessarily about just the scriptures that's in Psalms or the scriptures that's in Revelations, you see. Uh, he was speaking of finding out as much about everything as you possibly can. He talked about the fact that he and Dr. Gross had two book, two rooms full of books, you see. And those rooms weren't filled with just Bibles, you, you see. There, there, there were books in there about uh, physiology, about astrology, uh, astronomy, uh, you, you name it, it, it was there, you see. And uh, one thing I always heard about Dr. Kenley that impressed me the most was uh, they they said I, I can't I can't uh, I have no personal experiences that will reflect this, but I, I understand that uh, when when he would sit in a room and perhaps be talking to electricians, well he take he could take the floor, you see, and. Was full of uh, astronomists. You see, he could talk about astronomy. Room was full of nuclear physicists. Uh, I think he was a nuclear physicist because, again, he he talked. He when he says that that, that I I I've seen everything and I've been everywhere and I've done everything. You see. There's something esoteric about that, and, and I won't enter what it is. Yet. Consider the fact that he. Uh, 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 transcripts that, that have come forward. There are little pieces of, of uh, evidence and big pieces of evidence in those transcripts that we that we didn't know exist. We, we didn't know that they existed until those transcripts came into being. And I, I dare say that if, uh, if another batch was found tomorrow, uh, we would be learning about things in those transcripts that uh, we never we never heard before. Uh, maybe, maybe I misconstrued it. Uh, just one good example of it was when Titus tore down the Herod's temple in the year 70. See, he tore down the, 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 the temple and he took parts back and put them in the Vatican had them deconstruct. I've got to do some research on that, more research on it. 
uh, that's really all I had to say. Uh, just uh, if, if you're moved to uh, to more to know more, more about your creators and whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You, you see, uh, let let's keep Satan busy because he will stay busy until Yahweh takes us all uh, into another realm. That that that's for sure. And with that, uh, uh, stay firm. Stay stay uh, stay. In. Uh, wherever you can, wherever you can, listen to the gospel, uh, listen to what's being said, uh, think about it. Learn more and more about what the truth really is. Okay. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. William Walker, for that. Appreciate that. Um, Andre, we can barely hear you. Hello? Now we can hear you. Now we can't hear you. Like he's having trouble too. Okay, for our next speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Audrey Basson. Okay, hello everyone. And um, I did enjoy Dr. Walker's testimony, even though it was <laughs> sporadic. <laughs> um, um, but like Dr. Walker, um, I did want, I did have something to say. I thought I did, but um, I'm, I, you know, I'm so grateful for this teaching. I'm so happy to be able to um, listen. And like him, I was out of class for a long time. I was out of class. I came in, then I went out of class because it was so much, I felt like it was so much controversy, I felt anyway. And I guess I, I think at that right now, looking back, I say, well, maybe my foundation wasn't strong enough to withstand the controversies that I was hearing. And be, coming out of a family where um, I have a part of my family that's in California um, with the progressive teaching, then I'm here. And my mom, we used to go back and forth because um, I was um, originally came from Fort Lauderdale class and I went to Pompano's class. And it was just so much until, and I felt like I, I was just like, didn't know what was wrong or right. So, um, but I'm grateful to be learning. And, you know, I thank Yahweh for the pandemic because it, um, it allowed me to have the opportunity to hear people all from all over the place. And I'll tell you, you know, how Yahweh is ever present. <laughs> he is ever present for sure, because um, during, I think that was 2019, I was talking to a friend of mine. I hadn't talked to her for a long time. And I was telling her, I said, oh, I miss class. She says, you know, you can, you can see class online. I said, for real? She said, yeah, you can go online and you can watch class. I said, so how do I get online to see class? She says, that's why I don't like y'all people in Florida. Y'all slow. I said, you can call me slow. You can call me whatever you want to call me. Just help me get online. Right. And, and she did. And she did. She helped me get online to start watching class. And during this time, I've learned so much. I'm still, yeah, of course I'm learning. I don't know how to... Um, I understand a lot of things that I would like to talk about, but I don't really know how to go, how to show it. So I'm still learning. I, I even tell myself I'm going to sit down and make some notes so I can pull scriptures and show what it is that I want to say. But what I do know is that Yahweh is ever present. And, and another witness that I have, a, a witness that I have, is that one day I was, you know, one weekend I was like struggling in myself saying, man, it's so lonely. And so, you know, 
it's just so lonely. And so that Sunday, I went on to art courts class. And because, and I, I say that because of this, because when you don't have anybody in class that's close to you, who thinks like you, who talks like you, who share your ideas, who you can communicate with, it's, it is lonely. It's lonely because people really, if you're not talking foolishness, they really don't want to talk. So, um, so that, that weekend I was kind of feeling like that. So that Sunday I went on art course class. And um, so that morning, I think it was um, Dr. Marianne, I can't remember her last name, but she was talking about somebody sent Dr. Kinley a letter in 1975 saying the same thing. So when she said it, I thought I was hearing things. I really did. But then I'm like, okay, I'm started, starting chatting in class, chatting in the chat line. And I'm asking, did, is that what she said? And somebody answered me, yes. And she said, she said, if you want a copy of the letter, you can email me. Of course, I emailed her because right away, tears was like flowing down my face because I'm like, okay, somebody else really do think or feel the way I feel. But, you know, it's been so many times that I have questions in my mind. I haven't talked to anybody. And all of a sudden, somebody will get on the floor and they'll start to teach that. So whenever we think that Yahweh, he, he, don't, he, don't, he is within and he's in and he's out of, outside. We live and move in him and he's in us. And we, have, and we have to know that. And he, and he really does answer our questions when, we, when it's with a sincere heart. I believe that. So, you know, I'm not going to hold up the line today. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> my, I, to be honest with you, my, I, didn't, I, I was even contemplating if I was coming on today because my cable just came up from yesterday, my internet. And I thought I wasn't even going to be able to get on, but I did. It came up just about five minutes before class started. But um, all praises, all praises to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua. And I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that, you know, with you guys, we're going over the Elohim book. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. So all praises to Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Dr. Audrey Vassell. And for our next speaker, I'll be happy to call Dr. Lauren Lewis. I'd like to say good evening to the class. Mm -hmm. Give me just one second. I'm just going to switch devices. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I enjoyed the um, previous speakers and um, what they had to say about our uh, brother, Savior, and King, Yahshua the Messiah. I particularly um, enjoyed the previous speaker. Um, I know when we first started seeing Audrey come online, you know, a couple of said, well, who's Audrey? Where's Audrey from? You know, we're trying to figure out who Audrey was. Um, so to hear what um, Yahweh has done for you uh, through Yahshua the Messiah, how he has uh, retained you in this gospel and has kept you, even though you have family met at maybe this way and that way, um, he has kept you um, through all that time. And so that's beautiful. That was just encouragement. Um, that I love to hear. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that um, enjoyed hearing that encouragement and exactly what Yahshua the Messiah does for his son. I don't have a whole lot on my heart and mind. Um, I am just extremely happy to um, be called um, a son of Yahshua the Messiah to be a partaker of this gospel. 
um, and have a true understanding of Yahshua as he really is and actually exists. Um, if someone can get for me over, I uh, guess we can go ahead and start with John 14, 26. That's John 14 and 26. Mm -hmm. The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. All right. So now this scripture, this is over here in Matthews. This is um, during the time that uh, the Messiah was walking the earth. And he says, but the comforter, <clears throat> which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, if you can uh, go to the name chart for me, please. Mm -hmm. Who the Father Yahweh will send in a name. So now Yahshua, the Messiah is saying there's a comforter. He is the Holy Spirit, not as what was taught out in the world, just this vital force upon you, but the Holy Spirit is a comforter and he's the teacher. And so he's going to teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Now we know that the name of the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, is Yahshua, the Messiah. And he came in his father's name, as it says in John uh, 5 and 43, I'm coming in my father's name and you receive me, receive me not, excuse me. Let another come in his own name, him you will receive. And the whole world receives Jesus Christ. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, participate and listen uh, today uh, to the uh, Brooklyn class. And typically I, uh, Try to do that, you know, during the day helps me out through my day. Um, I put it on while I'm working, maybe in the office, but since I've been at home recovering with this leg, it made it even better. And I went class popped in my head. <laughs> so that's why I kind of appreciated what Audrey said um, about her internet being down and then five minutes before it's back up again. Um, but when class popped in my head, it was 9.34 a.m. And I re remember literally saying, oh, I wish the thought of going to class popped in my head right at 10 o'clock when the class started. Because I know me, I'm going to get 934, then someone's going to call from work, I'm going to get caught up in doing an email on the phone with this one, and then I forget about class. Like, it happened all the rest of the week. <clears throat> um, but... I happened to be on the phone with my assistant who has come to our class a few times and she was saying something and she mentioned class. Now this was right at 9.58. And I thought it was so interesting. As soon as she said, uh, mentioned our Zoom class, it made me remember Yahshua pricked my conscience and remind me about class. I'm like, okay, I gotta get off, I gotta go. And got on class. Now, Yahweh is doing everything for a reason. And I don't even, you know, I'm just listening to class. They're going to go through a transcript. In the beginning, there were, oh, it was open dialogue. And then um, uh, Brethren got on and asked the question. <clears throat> and the question said, I mean, our question was um, phrased to the extent, um, and I think um, Dr. McDaniels was on there as well. Um, but the question was phrased to the extent of what do you, um, give me just a second, my, I'm having a moment, my brain clicked. Um, what do you, oh gosh, Dre, <laughs> I just literally slipped out of my uh, head. Mm. Well, oh, what do you think it is to be holy? Now they're asking the person that is speaking, that is, um, I won't say hosting, but they were speaking at the time. And so they asked them, they said, you know, I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. What do you think it is to be holy, you know, to Yahweh? And so you had that person, I believe they ended up saying, you know, um, preaching in the gospel. Then someone else chimed in and um, stated, um, loving the brethren. Um, and then um, someone else chimed in 
and may mention on, you know, wrestling with that devil and not having the ability on your own to make wise decisions or the best decisions or even the difference between right and wrong. And so that individual that asked the question was actually looking for an answer like that. You know, the, to being able to tell the difference between right and wrong. One of the key things that came to my head, actually before that was said, um, someone else mentioned um, the Holy Spirit is what makes you holy, it's the Holy Spirit. And another member said, yes, it's the Holy Spirit in you. And so I started to think as the dialogue was going on is that everything, I think sometimes as being physical, we struggle with the thought that there is still something that we can do to be holy or righteous or without blame. Now, Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise and nor does he lie. When he says that there is none not righteous, no, not one, he wasn't lying about that. There is nothing that is in us that is righteous or holy, say, and we just went over that in class, except the Holy Spirit be in you. So all that doing right, thinking right, what to say is right, what not to say, the only thing that allows you to do that tells you when to shut up, when to speak, when to think, when to move. You know, just like one of the brethren that just returned to class not too long ago said something to got her up and said, now you get there. Now, what is that that causes you to move? So that is Yahshua, the Messiah. We have to conscious, we have to ask Yahshua to consciously remind us over and over and over again, that without him, we can do nothing. There's a scripture that says that. I want someone to grab that for me and get it, please. That is uh, John 15 and when we started one. Uh, yes, you can go ahead and start at one. I'm pretty sure there's some stuff in there. John 15 <clears throat> one. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Oh, is this in red letter? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Now, this is Yahshua starting. He starts off from the rip. He says, now, I am the true father, and my father, and that was a point that was brought out on Brooklyn, too. See, now, that's why you taught, was able to tell the Holy Spirit, even through all the patriarchs and prophets that came down the line, what did they set do? Did they preach themselves? They preach right. Yahshua the Messiah and the glory of the Father Yahweh. That's what they did. Right. They didn't preach anything else. You see him saying, now this is Yahshua, who is the Messiah. He says, now I'm the vine. My father, read on. And my father is the husbandman. He's the husbandman. See, now we are married to Yahweh. That's what they did back there. Um, if I can get the Moses chart, back there at that mount. Yahweh delivered them up out of the land of Egypt. And they went through that three days journey um, through the red, um, the parting of the Red Sea. And they came, they resurrected in that wilderness of Sinai. Yahweh said in three days, you clean up, don't go to your wives, don't do this. And you come to this mount. And when they came to that mount, Yahweh married them at that mount. He gave them a law. And he said, that, and they said, all these things that Yahweh has said, will we do, as in I do, will we do and be obe obedient? And he married them. And that's the marriage that took place. That's what he's done with the bride. So he's the husbandman, just like Adam was the husband and Eve is the bride. Yahweh is the husband and we, the assembly, is the bride. Read on. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may mm. forth for more fruit. Now you hear that? I want someone to look up the word purgeth or purge real quick. Now he says that every that does not bring forth fruit, he is going to hew it. Okay? Uh, read that verse over for me again while someone's getting that definition. That's the second verse. Yes. Every branch, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh mm -hmm. away. 
and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Right. Now he says, what doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. So we know that there's a fruit of the spirit. There's a certain type of thing that Yahweh is looking for. You see, that spirit that has to be in you. See, now we're not just saying these things. We don't come down to class just to have something to do. We're not just saying these little cute things because they sound like cute anecdotes. You see, in our doxology, it says, now unto him. Who's the him? <laughs> Yahweh. That is able to keep you from falling. Or Yahshua the Messiah. And he is going to present you faultless to the Father Yahweh. You can't do it any way but through Yahshua the Messiah. You see, now is this like the concept out in the world that there's a holy trinity? There's many gods? No, that's saying Yahweh that is pure spirit, unadulterated, abstract. We could not understand him with our limited five senses. That saying Yahweh took on shape and form. Can I get the Moses chart? took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. As you see right here, this same Yahweh Elohim is the one that was seen in visions and in revelations. That's what Moses saw. And those 74 men that said they saw God, that's what John on the Isle of Patmos saw. And ultimately, as we um, learned, we're talking about not too long ago, a few classes ago, that that seventh angel, which we come to find out by this vision, was to claim to be Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy, seeing the same vision that Moses and John saw, encompassing it all. He saw what they saw, and it's not a different story. It's the same story. And the glory and the honor went to the same one, Yahweh. So that same Yahweh, that's abstract moved in into an intermediate state known as Yahweh Elohim, seen in visions and revelations. Then that self-same spirit, follow the chart, that self-same spirit, Yahweh Elohim, manifested in the flesh and walked the earth plan, as the moderation says, as Yahshua the Messiah. All right? Now that is the same spirit and he is moving there's an operation that's taking place. What does it say? It's uh, uh, um, three states of existence, three manifestations, or is it no, three, manifest three states of existence, two manifestations? I literally just forgot that, okay? So someone just throw it in the chat, clear my brain up, all right? But that is Yahweh doing the whole thing. It's not something separate. That's what he said over there, Isaiah. He said, and beside me, there is no other savior you see what i say besides or beside where you want to throw there's nothing else but yahweh so now he's saying over here in john 15 he says i am the vine and the father is, is the husband man read on get back to him. all right i am the vine and my father is the husband man. every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right, read. Abide in me, and I in you. Mm -hmm. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Now you see that? He says, now the branches can't survive without the vine. So no more can you survive without Yahshua the Messiah. He has to be in you, you, and him. Read on. Fifth verse. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. for, without, for without me, ye can do nothing. Now you hear that? This is Yahshua the Messiah speaking. He says, I am the true vine and ye are the branches. Is that what it says? Yes, ma'am. And he says, without me, you can do nothing. You can't even behave right without Yahshua. That's how tight it is. You can't even walk without Yahshua. You can't breathe without Yahshua. You can't even have your continents in order without Yahshua. If we keep that in memory, then we realize there's nothing that's holy about me or you. But the only saving grace we have, or the get out of jail free card that we have, 
is Yahshua the Messiah in you. We have a slide that says that. We have a scripture that says that. It's Yahshua the Messiah in you, your hope of glory. Or like Dr. King, we added on, your only hope of glory. There's no other way unto the Father Yahweh. That's the kingdom. That's heaven. There's no other way unto the Father Yahweh but by our Savior, King, Brother, Potentate, Yahshua the Messiah. There's nothing we can do. We can't study enough. We can't read enough. We can't be disciplined enough. Unless he does, comes in and grabs us and takes us, then we are, will be lost and forever lost. You see, but once Yahweh has pricked you and has given you, just like the previous speaker said, she was away for some time. Just like Dr. Walker said, he was away for some time. Now, what is it that keeps you? You know, I'm, I'm going to get down because I know there's other speakers, but what is it that keeps you? You see, is it some mystical, whimsical thing flying in the air? No, what is it that keeps you? Go over there and grab for me. Oh, someone, real quick, I asked for that definition, purge. Purge from the American Heritage Dictionary. To clear a container or space, of, um, excuse me, to clear of something unclean or unwanted. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you see what he says? He says, everyone that don't bring forth fruit, he purges it. So it's, it's, it's not clean, it's unwanted. You see, it's a certain attribute of the Holy Spirit. There's certain attributes of the fruit. Then he says that don't bear, that doesn't bear fruit. It's certain attributes of the fruit of the Spirit. Someone grab that in the scripture. There are attributes. There's a way, just like we are able to detect and follow that negative spirit down through the ages of dispensation. We have things that we are able to say, that's Yahshua. He does not change. He overturns, he overturns. He operates by a pattern. He does not change. So when he did back there, while you're getting that one scripture, someone go over there and get the um, scripture about the um, house that was swept and garnished. You see? Now this is, this is what I thought was so beautiful in the previous speaker. They talked about being away. But what is it that keeps you? Even when you think you're away. See, I love this so much. You know, I love that scripture that says the eyes of Yahweh are in all places, beholding good and evil. Can't get away from Yahweh. Adam and Eve tried to hide from the presence of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. hide from your father? Can you hide from your mother? That was from a natural standpoint. We can't hide from Yahweh. You're not getting away. You know, you're not escaping from him. Oh, I just don't want to come around. And you think Yahweh is uh, ignorant of what's going on just because you're not around? Oh, no, that's not how that works. He's ever present. He's always there. And that's the blessing. Because he could have left us, but he didn't. So what is it that's keeping you? If someone got the house uh, swept and garnished? That's Matthew 12 and 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth this empty, swept, and garnished. Now he's talking about this negative spirit. I don't even roam and he said, I'm going to return to the house mm -hmm. from where I came from. And when he returns, what? Right. Then, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So now listen, now let's talk about this house that was swept. The swept part is that's negative spirit out. And he says, but I'm going to go back and return to this house. <laughs> and he says he brings seven others. Is that what it says? Yes. Okay, you keep going. You keep going low, Lauren. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Mm -hmm. and enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Read on. So shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. 
I'm not sure is that the one, I thought it was a part that actually shows both parts, mm -hmm. but maybe I'm not, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. The point that I'm after is this, is that that house that talked about being swept around, that was the expelling of that negative spirit, the satanic spirit. You see what I'm saying? But not only is your house swept, it has to be garnished with something. That garnishment is the Holy Spirit. So that once it tries to come back, it can't break in because it's already filled with something. It's filled with the Holy Spirit. So now you went away. You thought you were away for some time, you see? But Yahshua kept you, you see? That's the gift of the Holy Spirit is once he has given it to you, it's yours. Now, just like it says in, what's that? Second Corinthians or whatever, what manner of conversation ought we to have? Now, if Yahshua was doing that type of work for us, for the undeserving and the unrighteous, what manner of conversation ought we to have? Mm -hmm. We ought to be thankful, brethren, of everything that Yahshua has us in, even the hard times. Because someone brought out not too long ago, without the refining and the pressure, you can't make diamonds, without the refining and the heat, you are not trying to be part of the body of Yahshua and the Messiah. You see, because the reward we get for being part of Yahshua's body is eternal, immortal glorification mm -hmm. in his body, part of the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. You make up the body mm -hmm. and we are only saved by grace, through grace, by Yahshua the Messiah. And with those words, I say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Lauren Lewis, for that beautiful testimony. Uh, and for our next speaker, it will be me. And I would like to start off saying that I appreciate all the, the vessels that came before me. Uh, I really <clears throat> heard the Holy Spirit speaking through them. And what, what Yahweh has done for them through Yahshua the Messiah and how he has kept them. And one important thing that they mentioned is that none of this was done of themselves. It was all Yahshua who has put it on their brain, on their hearts to come to class, to ask how they can still participate in class, to remind them that this class is about to start when it's not one of the normal classes to, to chime in. It is, it is our way that is controlling this all the good and the bad and <clears throat> that it's a blessing to be able to understand that and when you understand that and you accept that that it is only Yahweh who is controlling this uh you're you're at peace with everything because you know that it is all in his hands uh can we start off get Isaiah? Uh, I think that's 45 and 5. Yep. Isaiah 45 and 5. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. There is none else. It is, it is only him. Please continue. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Gird it. Can somebody get that in the, the definition in the uh that word in, in the def, uh, dictionary for me, please? Mm -hmm. Uh all right. Is, now he uh, says, go ahead, Dr. Hamilton. Okay, that is uh the root word is gird. That means to encircle with a belt or band, to fasten or secure, to prepare for action. To surround, let's see, it's got two definitions here. Let me look at the second one. 
Mm, no, that's not available. Dorian, did you have something for that one? That's not good. Um, well, I'm still looking. I have to good. make to make um, mm -hmm. um, um, fast or secure. Mm -hmm. That's one. I also have um, to prepare for action, mm -hmm. muster up one's resources. I was looking for, I, I, I forgot which dictionary it was in. It was, they had a definition of equip. Mm -hmm. All right. You are right. right. Excuse me. Um, it is, and this is Paul, I'm sorry. It's in the Strong's um, Concordance where it says equipped. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. McDaniel, uh, I got one more from the etymology. Okay. I got one more from the etymology, which is from Old English. It means to invest with attributes. Ah, uh -huh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, please continue, Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45 and 5. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. So he has girded you, though that you have not known him. Nobody in this school, whether you was born into this school or you was born out of this school, knew who your savior or your creator was but we still called on him because we knew it was somebody and we still called on him. and them times of need when we wanted this or we feel like we needed that and we expected him to answer our prayers and we didn't know his name go go ahead and continue that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the, from the east mm -hmm. the sun rises on the east and it sets on the west Go ahead. From the West, that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So he says, thank you, Dr. Dr. Lewis. He says he formed the light and create darkness. And he makes peace and create evil? Uh, yes makes peace and create evil so he is making an opposition of good which is evil and that would be lucifer and that lucifer he made lucifer as an adversary only for himself we have no the only hope and the only hope we have is joshua and then come to stand up against lucifer because we we we, we are weak we, we, we have nothing coming towards him. He will outpower us, outslick us, outsmart us every time. It takes that Holy Spirit in you right. to be able to keep him at bay and to keep you in Yahweh's hands. See, he's the one who's, who's causing everything that, that goes on around us so he can show his power. Just like back in the days, of Moses when he was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yahweh told him to go down there and bring my, you're going to bring my children up out, but it's, it's not going to be easy because I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. See, he, he did that to show him and they went through them to 10 plagues so they could, he could show his power. That that they them little puny guys that they were worshiping were no match for for Yahweh, and that's it. Still goes on to this day. We are no match for this satanic spirit, and it takes Yahshua in us, and the the preaching of the gospel to help us withstand these wiles of the world, and. This world is basically, it's like it's, it's, it's fueled off lies right now. It's, it's like that's what got the world, has, has the world turning is lies because 
truth is not really nowadays there's not really too much res respect in the world you can have factual video evidence uh, of something and some of the the world looks at it at in a, at a different way and says no that that's not that that's that's this but this video footage right here clearly sh states and shows that is it's this it happened this way it went this way and, and no other way and the world doesn't want to see it like that there was a a time magazine that uh years and years ago dr uh, ronda brazil had brought to the class's attention the article in the time magazine uh the headline was is truth dead and no truth is not dead because Yahweh is truth and Yahweh is alive and ever present always so he can't be dead it's just that the world refuses to see the truth when it's it's right there in front of them but it it, it takes an open mind and an open heart to want to see it and understand it and that's not that's not on on that's not a, of of our uh of our own will itself that's of yahweh that's because of the grace and mercy that he has on us to be able to see his understanding not our own understanding because it's our understanding that god is in a lot of the message that we are in right and i had to to come to an understanding uh recently and I, I'm I'm still going through. I'm gonna always be going through. I understand it because we always gonna be learning uh, of Yahshua and Yahweh as through time goes on and for generations to come. But I've been going through an ordeal uh, with a neighbor, and I, I know I have temperament issues, and just like anybody else. Uh, you, I don't, well, I'm going to speak for myself. I, I have to wonder sometimes, and I, I, I know the answer to that because I have to wonder, am, am I a son? Uh, am I being obedient enough to, to what Yahweh is saying to me, or am I paying attention to the things that he is showing me? And just because you are in the school doesn't mean that everything is going to be uh uh you know roses and, and peaches and creams and and whatnot it's when you're when you realize that this is the truth and you begin to love the truth you're gonna have start having problems uh you they you might not notice them they might be subtle but they're going to build up to be bigger problems because that satanic spirit wants you. He don't want you following the truth. He wants you to follow his lies. And he will try to distract you in any which way he can. And see me, I, like I said, I have a temperament issue and I, I ask Yahweh to, to work with it. Help me out. Uh, I know I'm not the, I, I am no angel and I am far from it. And I, I am thankful and still I, I i know i can be ungrateful uh a lot of times in in showing my appreciation for his merciness and his his love that he's bestowed on on me and i forget that i have to be a, a representative of him and in doing so I have to think before I react. And the devil knows that sometimes that boy don't like to think before he reacts. He just reacts. And he knows how to push your buttons. Right. And this neighbor of mine knows how to push my buttons. I, I, I swear, Yahweh re will remove one obstacle out of your way because I had a lot of vices mm. and I knew that the devil could use them to keep me down mm -hmm. in this pit <laughs> and y'all removed them vices but the devil will find something else 
Right. To, to like bring you come on back buddy i'm not done with you yet <laughs> and my neighborhood for years and years i've been going through uh having a police call on me because she feels that my whiskey barrels whiskey barrel planters are too close to her fence um uh, she she had a wooden fence and in 2016 we had a windstorm in the wind blew her fence down and ever since then she's blamed my whiskey barrels for her fence uh until the cops even told her one time like ma'am your, your wood is deteriorated and like wood can't make wood deteriorate uh you, you just need a new fence but that still would not stop she claimed uh my whiskey barrels she had property on my side of the yard, which is on the other side of the fence where my whiskey barrels are, and that my whiskey barrels are actually on her property. So years later, when she finally gets this fence repaired or redone, which was last year, uh, I'm thinking everything should be nice now. You, you, should, you got a new fence, you got a new vinyl fence, you should be happy, I should be able to put my whiskey barrels back up. Your new fence is extended out three feet from where your old fence was. So if that little extra three feet makes you happy, then lady, go right on ahead. But the devil is never happy, y'all. I would I I can I'm a witness to that. Uh mm -hmm. this lady, as as I'm trying to put my whiskey barrels back up, this lady trespasses in my yard and attacks me by throwing one of the whiskey barrels on my leg and this whiskey barrel has about 80 to 100 pounds of dirt in it and i'm somewhat in shock and the next thing i know me and this lady is arm tussling now this lady and I, sometimes i even feel ashamed to say it but evil has no age and that it, you can see that from watching the news and this lady is a 61 year old lady. This is somebody's grandma. And you thinking, I, I would think like, you know, grandmas are supposed to be sweet, baking cakes and cookies for their grandkids and, and whoever else and whatnot. And that is just not this lady's MO. Uh, so I'm tussling with this lady. And instead of me striking her and I can't get away, I trips her and she falls on the ground and she pulls me down with her. And at this point in time, I have my mother outside or her husband is outside and we're pulled away from the incident. She uh, actually molested me during the incident. Uh, and just, uh, just a whole bunch of foolishness, something that, you know, that I'm pretty sure the devil is just smiling at. And I leave and I go to the police station. I make a police report. I am literally bleeding from head to toe. This lady might have had a, a scratch on her neck. Uh, I make my police report at the police station. They tell me, the lady I made my report with turns around and asks her death sergeant, what should he do? The death sergeant says, go home, take pictures of yourself, call us, and we'll send someone out to arrest her. So I'm thinking, finally, uh, there's some some justice that's about to be served. So I go home and she already has some cops over there. Uh, I don't even make it inside the house. I make it to my porch and they ask me if we can talk. I say, yeah, we could talk right on the porch. They say, can we step off the porch and talk? I say, sure, not a problem. Maybe they want to get me away from everybody else so they could have separate stories and not have nobody eavesdropping or whatnot. So we step off the porch. She asked me if we could step down towards the walkway sidewalk parallel with the street. I'm thinking, okay, uh, it's fine. If it suits you better, lady, then we can go and step down there. So we go down there and she says, it's a male and a female officer. And she says, so what happened? No, the male officer asked me, so what happened? I started telling this lady trespassing my yard and she throws a whiskey barrel on my leg. And before I could even respond anymore, he says, man, how old are you? I says, I'm 41. He says, you know how old she is? I was like, in her early 60s. He said, now, before he even respond, I said, you know, evil has no ace. This lady trespassed in my yard. The female cops interrupts and says, 
Well, both of y'all were fighting, but I'm going to arrest you because you fled the scene. I said, excuse me, fled the scene. I said, the scene was in my backyard. This wasn't a fight. You look at me, you look at her. I clearly got my butt whooped and I have a police report in my hand and I'm supposed to be calling the cops, letting them know to come and arrest her. She says, no, I'm arresting you because you fled the scene. And I was like, this is not a, a accident scene. It's not Oakland County. You said it was a fight and I've never heard like, I can't go and make a police report for my for myself. So I got arrested, spent three days in jail. Uh, and before I'm able to come out of jail, I have to find some place to stay because this lady has said that she's in fear of her life that I was trying to choke her to death and that I said I was going to kill her, among other things too. Uh, so I have to find, have to get them a new address where I'm gonna be staying at until this is all said and done. And I have to wear a tether, a, some, a supposedly unrestricted tether where I can go anywhere throughout the state of Michigan but I just can't go within two blocks of my house or where I've been staying at or where I pay bills at. Uh, so I had to stay with an auntie. For three months, I tried to fight so I could go back home. And during these three months, I was well, doing this whole period of time. I've had a, a court appointed attorney. And these during these three months, he didn't seem like the the best a court appointed attorney that uh for to my for my benefit. He wasn't making to me all the smart choices to uh like to for an example in the first month before my case was bonded over to felony court. I had a favor, and this is how I know Yahweh is in control of everything, y'all. I had a favor done for me by somebody down at the 36th district who's head, a head over all the judges down there. She, my cousin, is a good friend of hers. They went to a school together. She did something. She made up a packet so where I can go home. She told me to tell my lawyer. She knew who my lawyer was after I told him his name. She, when I mentioned my lawyer's name to other people in his field, in the attorney field, I didn't get the best response. I got like one of them, uh, not him. You know, like, oh, you, you're doomed. And this is the same response I got for this lady. And I think this is why she, she probably went um uh, beyond what you know what she usually does to go over somebody else's head so I can get back home. And she prepared a packet and she told me to tell this man that before my trial starts to stop by our office and pick up this packet. I called him and I didn't get no message. So I left a voicemail for him. This is about an hour to two hours before my court trial. So when I get to court, uh it's probably about 10 to 15 minutes prior, I, I let him know. Uh like, yo, you got the packet? And he say, what packet? I said, Miss such and such told me to tell you uh, to stop by our office and pick up a packet. I called you and left a voice message. Uh, you were supposed to see Philip. He said, well, I, I was talking to Philip on the way up here. He didn't mention nothing about it. I said, well, maybe Philip didn't know that the packet was for me at this point in time right now. So he said, all right, I'm gonna go down there and see if I could catch him and uh, grab this. So he comes back five minutes later, empty handed. We go through court. Uh, my neighbor gets up there and she tells a complete opposite story from what actually happened. I mean, a lie from the beginning to the end. And this judge says, you know what? Uh, I can't let you go back home. And I'm going to, you know, I have, I have to bind this over to felony court because this is what I have, you know, before me. And apparently, you know, my defense lawyer didn't do anything impressive to persuade the judge's mind different. So I'm in felony court and I'm trying to fight to go home. And for three months, I'm coming up to no avail. The judge is telling this man that he needs to make a written motion. 
and I go to court three months in a row. Uh, and this man does not make a written motion. I watch TV and I watch court TV and a lot of drama, uh, crime dramas and whatnot. I know from watching TV, I, I say I have a, a, a TV, a, a law degree in TV. So I know from watching TV that when a lawyer makes a motion that you need to make a written motion. And three times in a row, this man does not make a written motion. So in the fourth month, in the fourth month now, my original judge was moved out, suspended on uh, sexual harassment charges, among other things. And I get a new judge in. This new judge tells my lawyer, like, yo, we need a written motion. If you need a link for the written motion, uh, we need a written motion. Also, we need something from the young man's uh, mother saying what he does around the house and from the doctor of the, the boy's mother to make sure he's not pulling our leg about her medical conditions. So I get all this material and an affidavit. I get this material, give it to the lawyer. Uh, the fifth month, he still does not make a written motion. He tries to make a verbal motion and just tell him like, yo, we need a, a, a written motion so I could see this in front of me. And so the prosecution can have it in front of him also. So the sixth month comes, the lawyer has a written motion and the judge allows me to go home. Uh, during this time, I had people to offer, offer me money offer to get me a new lawyer, a paid lawyer, because they felt like I had no way of winning with this lawyer. But I had my faith in Yahshua. And just because of his lawyer's name, uh, his name was Jonathan Simon. And it just sounded so familiar with a couple names in the book, uh, John and Simeon. So I, I just decided, I said, you know what, I'm going to have to stick with this lawyer because I don't, you know, there's there's nothing else I could do but leave it in Yahweh's hand and, and just trust in Yahshua and that whatever he decides my fate to be, then that's what it'll be. And just do not sway away from this gospel. Cause I know from speaking to other brethren, and it was it was also the preaching of the gospel from the other brethren that kept my faith strong in Yahshua because they let me know that they've been through things similar to my trials and tribulations. And no no matter what it was, a trial and a tribulation is a trial and tribulation. You, what might be big to you or small to you and big to someone, it, it, there is, is no such thing. It's, right. If you're, if you're going through a trial and tribulation, you're going through it. The devil has you. It's, it's not like Dr. Kennedy said, there is no, no little white lie. <laughs> a lie is a lie. And that's the bottom line to it. And I had to keep my faith in, in Yahshua. And going through this trial, I had to learn a, a lot of things that he works in his own time, not my time, not anybody else's time, in his time. And it's, it, it's no reason to keep on asking for the same thing over and over again. He heard you the first time. And he'll do it. And he'll, he'll deliver you when he sees fit, because it's for your benefit that you need to realize and recognize something and actually learn something. Right. And coming back when I, when I got back home, it was, it was a relief off my shoulders. I, I knew that it wasn't over with because we still had a trial date. And I think I probably came home in March. This, this was like the, the sixth month of this ordeal. Uh, so in the next month, we had to decide for uh, a court date. Uh, my lawyer is still, is, I, I must have to say it, like, seemed to be incompetent. Because one day, he, on our last court date, when I was sent, I was told to come home, he asked me to get off the Zoom call before they, you know, be, and they finished up with the next court meeting. And so one morning, I get a call from the lawyer. He says, hey, you're supposed to be in court. 
I say, uh, you didn't tell me that. He said, yeah, I did. I say, no, our last court meeting, you had me get off before I found out the next court date. And uh, he was, and the, the call was, to, or the trial, or the, this uh, hearing was supposed to be whether I wanted a bench trial or a trial by jury. And I was, that was another thing. I was like, I'm supposed to, be, he's asking me to decide this right now. And I was like, that's how I also know that you didn't tell me because I know that I'm supposed to have some time, at least a week or two, to try to figure out, you know, what is the best option for me to have, whether I want to be judged by 12 or whether I want to be judged by one man. So I, had, I asked him uh, about this, this new judge because it, it seemed like when he came into, when he replaced the, the first judge, he had a little bit more of an understanding. Everything wasn't one-sided to him. Because when my one case was called up, uh, one of my trials was called up, he had said, oh yeah, I remember this. This is, everything is always the defendant's fault. The defendant did this, the defendant did that. Ain't never nothing the plaintiff's fault. So let me hear what's going on. And that right there let me know that, you know what? Thank you. I said, thank you, Asha. I, it seemed like I have somewhat of a fighting chance because this man seems like he he has an ear, or he has an understanding, or he knows that it's always more to what's going on. And come to find out, when I asked the lawyer about a little background on this judge, he told me he was retired. Uh, a while before he retired, he was pretty hard on, on the criminals or the defendants. And since he's been out of retirement, he's seemed to be kind of defender friendly. And right there, I told him, OK, I'll, I'll go with this judge. And we set a court date. And they was going through a couple of dates. And the judge asked the lawyer, he said, how's June 6th? And uh, I, I, I'm sitting in my chair, and when he said that, I, I perked up, and I'm saying, please say yes. Please say you'll take Bill 6. And the lawyer says, you know what, Bill 6 works out fine for me. Uh, you'll do it in the afternoon. And I said, wow. What? It, I, I, I can't. There, there is. I can't be sad about any outcome that comes out from from June 6th because coming from learning from coming to this school you learn that June 6th is the actual true birth date of our Messiah Yahshua and I'm just like well whatever the verdict whatever's going to happen it's going to be a resurrection one way or the other and I'm going to be done with this and we go through court. And I, I still, that, that devil is still in the back of my mind. Like, you're, you're not going to win. You're about to be doing time. You, you might as well prepare for it. And I'm just trying to keep my faith strong in Yahshua. And it's only Yahshua that is keeping my faith strong. Because from the life that I used to live, I mean, there's it, so many thoughts that have run through my mind about uh, this neighbor <laughs> and, and what I could do for retribution. But he says, vengeance is mine. So I, I have to just stand in the holy place and let him do what he needs to do or do what he is will, willing or what he is going to do because I don't want to interfere because if I interfere, I'm going to make it worse for myself and dig a hole deeper for myself. I can't help him. I need him to help me. So I can't, the only thing I can do to help him is just keep the faith in Yahshua. And I need Yahshua to do that. So we come to June 6th and my neighbor testifies, her husband testifies. One of the, the male arresting cop that was there testifies, the female wasn't there. And my mother testifies. And then I'm supposed to be called next to testify. After my mother testified, the lawyer told, I'm sorry, the judge told my lawyer, he says, uh, Mr. Simon, 
arrest your case. I'm ready to hear closing arguments. And like I said, I, you know, I got a TV law degree and I'm like, hold on. You ain't, hold on, you ain't even heard me yet. How are you ready to hear closing arguments? And I turn to my lawyer and I'm like, yo, what's going on? And we're standing up. He says under his breath, sit down and shut up. I think you might just have one. And so I, I, I do what he says, because I remember a brother telling me when he was going through something was similar. Yahweh told him, shut up, just shut up. And so that's what I did. I just shut up. And the prosecution came in and gave his closing arguments. And I mean, from from listening to the prosecution, I, I, I could have sworn myself I thought I was the hillside strangler. I mean, because that's how he painted me out to be. And I mean, he almost had me convinced and for that, you know, the, the picture he was painting was actually the man who I was. And it, it took Yashua to tell me that you are not that man no more. And he goes through and goes through and tries to make me look as bad as he can. And he rests his case. And my lawyer didn't even have to say anything. The judge went to start speaking and he went to say, I can't remember everything he said, but he said, told the lady that she was petty and that he found her to be the aggressor. And that in his years of doing this, age does not have a number on it. And then therefore he finds the defendant to be not guilty and told me I could go home. And I just said, thank you, Ashua. Because it was nothing that anybody could do to get me back home and to clear me of, of this hanging over my head. Nobody but Yahshua. Like I said, I had a, a judge who was over everybody down in 36th District who prepared a packet to send me home in the first month, back in September. And... Yeah, we did what he did. Like, no, it ain't time yet. <laughs> You'll go home when I want you to go home, boy. Mm-hmm. And all I could do is just be thankful and just be gracious and, and, and thankful and that and knowing that Yahweh is in control of everything. And that no matter how hard it gets, you might be looking at that brick wall a half an inch away from it. But Yahshua is right there with you. And that brick wall will not be able to hurt you. You will not run into that brick wall. And if you do run into that brick wall, he will heal you. He has the power to do that. And it is for your benefit, just as long as it might be as well as somebody else's benefit. So they can see his power and see that he is the only true savior that there is and his name is the only name that would give you salvation and give you peace not not peace like like lauren dr lewis just said and when she have john 14 26 read the peace that only yahshua can give you that eternal peace and when i got back home and and got found not guilty you know like I said, the devil, he 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 don't stop. You know, as soon as I got back home, not even as soon as I got back home, I'm walking outside of the courthouse to dig the car so I could pull it up in front of the cross. And I'm parked on the main street. And I had no idea uh, that I parked right here where, I, where I, in geographical location wise, because when I went back to my car, when I was parked on the street, my neighbor was parked right next to me in the parking lot. And it could, I seen it seemed like she was on her cell phone on a speaker, and I could tell that she was screaming at the top of her lungs. And that devil was in my head, like you need to just start dancing right now, like you won this. And I and I, I started to entertain that thought for a second until y'all was like, "Boy, you didn't win nothing. <laughs> you better be humble and and continue on." And doing what you're doing and, and asking for this strength and this will to keep him at bay. Because you do not want to entertain these thoughts. You do not want to let that devil, he, he is a slickster. He will have you thinking 
that that you had did something when you ain't did a, a nothing. It, it was all Yahweh. It, it has been Yahweh from the beginning, and it is going to be Yahweh in the end. And if you have anything, any doubts, any questions, just give it to Yahshua. That's all. And, and just fully give it to him. Don't don't try to do anything. Just continue on with your life and just try to be the best son that you can be. And and spread your testimony and, and this great gospel that Yahshua has shared with you with anybody that that is willing to hear it. And if you got anything out of that, all glory and honor goes to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua. And I say hallelujah and yield the floor. Hallelujah. And for our next speaker, I would like to call Dr. Dorian Lewis. Uh, good, good evening. Uh, I've enjoyed class thoroughly. Okay, so we got like eight minutes. So um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed all the vessels and uh, everything that Yahweh brought through them. Dr. Walker talked about, uh, he talked about, um, there's a few points that stuck out to me. I'm going to be moving fast, so, uh, but he talked about studying and, and uh, you know, researching things and all of that. And that's important to do. So we, don't be afraid of nothing out in the world. You research whatever you want to in the world, but compare it to what you learned in this school, you see, and that's what uh, helped your confidence that Yahweh really did get, give Dr. Kinley a vision. He talked about Dr. Kinley in the modern books. He, Dr. Kinley, you listen to some of these lectures, he talked about that a whole lot, you know, having all them books and all. He said, I'll read anything. He said, don't be afraid of none of that stuff. You come, you research what you want, but compare it to what you learn in this school. And so it causes you to have to know what we teach in this school too. So you got to do some studying here too, you know? So uh, I thought that was wonderful. Audrey talked about, um, she gave her testimony and I thought that was a wonderful testimony. And that's the thing I was just talking to another brother about. See, Yahweh is doing things in our lives. You know, we all are taught it physically that, you know, we're the master of our own destiny. We control this, control that. But Yahweh been doing things and we were unaware of it, moving us in directions. You understand? He's got a plan for you and I. Yahweh, is, this is not the concept of God or Allah or whatever in the world where God's just sitting there hoping you get your act together. That's not what Yahweh is. You understand? He is in direct control. And there's a lecture. I, uh, I think it's uh, intercession, rightly dividing the, the word of truth. Dr. Kinley talks about that, talking about Yahweh's purpose. See, Yahweh's purpose is being carried out unhindered and unimpeded. And uh, he'll be carrying out his purpose through you. Right. Like you and I. And, we, and you are unaware of it. It's going to happen whether you know about it or not. So what we come to the school for is to learn how he's carrying out his purpose so that we are aware. So Dr. Kelly said in the textbook to, to have a permanent and conscientious realization of the universal, like Audrey said, ever presence of Yahweh. So that's why we come to this school to learn. And then Dr. McDaniel gives his beautiful testimony about all the stuff that he went through. And see, the story was wonderful. Or, well, you know, it's hard for him to go through, but it was a good story to hear. And we're thankful to hear Yahweh, how Yahweh brought him out of that. But don't miss the real point. He said it. You see, talking about how Yahweh used that to increase his faith in Yahshua. The manifestation may change. And he said a wonderful point. No matter what you're going through, it wasn't, what's hard for somebody may be easy for it don't matter. You know, I get that with the cancer all the time. People be talking like, well, I'm going through this. Well, but it ain't as bad as cancer. It don't matter. <laughs> it's all a death. You know, whatever you're going through is your death. You understand? But ask Yahweh, what would you have me to see out of this, Yahshua? He ain't teaching you how to not get into it with your neighbor. He's teaching you how to trust in him, how to have more faith in him. And that's the point, you see. And then Dr. Lewis talked about this. And I want to go back to this real quick. I got four minutes. Go back to... um. John 15 chapter. And that's one of the only ones I know exactly where it's at because that's one of my favorite ones. Audrey also talked about uh, those letters, Dr. Kinley. So, uh, years ago, I was having one of my trials and tribulations that Yahweh used to increase my faith in him. And boy, them letters, I used to read them every day on my lunch break and be in tears too. The letters is powerful. With what you see, and as she said, you see, listen, you're not the only one suffering or going through something, you know. And even thinking that feeling alone, that's even 
in the Bible. You guys, a lot of the sons felt that way. Elijah, after 450 prophets of Baal, he was like, Yahshua, I'm the only one. Let me die now. <laughs> what are Yahweh telling him? You ain't the only one or nothing. <laughs> I got 700 over here. So, but these things we're experiencing, they already been written about. So count yourself worthy when Yahweh allowed you to see that. This is not a common thing. Dr. Walker talked about that. Like people, we tell them, you know, you breathe the name Yahweh, look at the tree. They, they so smart that just, they can't accept that. You accept it. Count yourself worthy. Oh, count yourself blessed that Yahweh made you accept it. <laughs> I'll go back to this uh, real quick. I want to show something with Yahshua real quick. John 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Right. So Yahshua was talking to his disciples, and he's giving them an analogy or speaking in parables to him. He's saying, I am the true vine. Now, in this, okay, go ahead. And my father is the husband man. So as Dr. Lewis said, because Yahweh is the true husband, mm -hmm. he's spiritually speaking, we are all feminine. In other words, we, that that the traditional role of the husband is to be the provider, right? The protector, mm -hmm. you know, get out of this male, female, that just, we're talking about principles. So Yahshua, Yahweh is the provider. He provides us with everything, include, down to life. Our very life is him, you see? So, but in this case, he's using this analogy about uh, plant, hu plant husbandry. Mm -hmm. That's the care and tending to plants. Like, uh, you know, or whatever, a gardener. You also have animal husbandry. Yahshua was speaking about this for a reason. You see, so go, he said, I am the vine uh, and my father is the husband. Go ahead. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, right. he takes away. Right. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Right. So we just looked up purge and it means to take away, move out. It's like, wait, don't those two things? He said, every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. But in this case, and Dr. Ed, you can probably, I know he can speak a whole lot more about it. But in this case, so the branches that aren't bearing fruit, that are withered, you cut them off your plant. I got little flowers. You got to cut the little dead branches off because they zap energy from the plant. And then the, the ones that are producing flowers or fruit, whatever you're growing, Ed will tell you, you got a green a, a, a tomato plant. When it produces tomatoes, you pull it. When they're ready to go, you take them off so that it will produce more fruit. That will make it produce more fruit. So that's why he purges those vines that bear fruit so that they continue to produce. I got flowers. They do the same thing. They call it deadheading. When you when it got nice, pretty flowers, then they start to get old and wilted, you take them off so it'll produce more new flowers. So that's what Yash was talking about. Go ahead real quick. Now ye are clean through, excuse me, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, right. except it abide in the vine. He's the main, he's the vine. And all the branches come off of him. We all come off of him. You understand? He's the vine that's rooted to the ground. You see? So go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Right. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Much fruit, right. Without me, ye can do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. We can't change our hearts and our minds. We can't. And that's the point of these trials and tribulations we go through. So we learn to rely on Yahshua and stop trying to turn to our own concepts and our own opinions and my own ability and what I can do and what I think. You stop, you, you turn to Yahshua first. Yahshua, I don't know. Tell me what to do, please. And so real quick, we're almost done. There's already a precedent set for this in the Bible. Yahshua said, we you know all the scriptures. He says, I come in to fulfill. So who else was a husbandman? Mm -hmm. Adam in the Garden of Eden. You understand what I'm saying? First man, Adam. Second man, Adam. Yahshua just fulfilling all of it. He ain't, There's no wasted words with Yahshua. Everything he's talking about, he's fulfilling the scriptures. Why? Is he just coming in to do, to repeat things? No, he's doing that to prove, that shows that he is the promised Messiah, that Israel was promised, the promised Savior. That's what identifies him as that, because there's false messiahs that were then, and there still are now. So how do you know? Because he, the steps of a righteous man are ordered. So he's going to come in doing the exact thing. Adam in the, and the Bible says that Adam tending in that garden. He had to tend the garden, address and keep it. So here's Joshua. You understand? Talking about the vine and the husband. We out of time.
uh, class was wonderful, and I thank you, Ashley, for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Dr. Dorian Lewis, for that recap. I'd like to thank everyone for coming and visiting and joining and studying with us today and all our visiting brethren. We here at the Southfield Zoom class, hold classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. and on Sundays from 11.30 to 1.30. And our in-person classes are Sundays from 11 to 1 and they will be announced before they take place. I once like again, thank everyone for coming out. Uh, sorry, are there Dr. any announcements? Day. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got one announcement. I was wrong on Tuesday about the next uh, textbook class. It's gonna be this coming Tuesday. I forgot we were doing two on one off. So uh, this coming Tuesday, the 2nd, August the 2nd, we will be doing textbook. That's it. Wonderful. So this coming Tuesday will be textbook Tuesday uh, following up. <clears throat> and once again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and studying with us today and all the speakers for sharing with us what Yahweh Yahshua has done for you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to take doxology, which will be taken from the last two verses of Jude. May we all rise in our hearts and minds. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.